Tomko Detective Agency. How can you be sure? I'll see what I can do. Judgment is the newest entry in the Yakuza franchise. It's a spin-off with all new characters, and it's the first to feature English voice acting in over a decade. I've heard some pretty good things about the Yakuza series over the years, so I figured this would be a great time to jump in. So let's take a look. Now the Yakuza series is not something I've followed closely. For one, I'm one of those stingy Americans who doesn't watch or play anything with voice acting in a foreign language. And as far as I can tell, the only Yakuza game with the English VO is the first one, and it's apparently not great. Cut the bullshit. I killed him. Don't give me that bullshit. But after hearing some good things about Yakuza and the recent Fist of the North Star game, my curiosity was piqued. Then I hear this new game Judgment has English voice acting? Sign me up. So in this game, you play as Takeyuki Yagami, a former lawyer turned private investigator. You take on various cases, make friends around the city, stumble into some cases that other lawyers are heading, solve mysteries, and fight dudes. Lots and lots of dudes. Dear God, there are so many dudes to fight. If I'm being honest, I gotta say, I got a much different experience out of Judgment than I expected. I'd been hearing so much about how the Yakuza games and Fist of the North Star had all this camp and silliness, I was expecting goofs, gaffs, and laughs supplemented with a competently made narrative to drive me forward. But ultimately, the game's plot was very engrossing and I didn't find much in the way of interesting or funny side objectives. I found myself eagerly awaiting every cutscene to see what would come next. Our main character, Yagami, is a disgraced ex-lawyer who runs his own PI business. This game sees him getting caught up in an investigation into the deaths of multiple Yakuza gang members in Kamurocho, which is the city where the bulk of the game takes place. As he delves deeper into the murders, the mystery deepens in really interesting ways. This game kept me guessing for a long time, and every new wrinkle in the investigation felt exciting. As I said before, this game features English voice acting, a big plus for me, and even bigger plus is that the performances are good. Really, really good actually. I think you must have my boys confused. Right, Kengo? Yeah. No one likes a fucking liar! Oh! <laughs> The worst one off the top of my head is probably Yagami's, and even then it's mostly very solid, just a little flat here and there. Not only that, nearly everything about the cutscenes is on the same level. The lighting, the cinematography, the music, sometimes, the writing, ugh, the writing, so good. This game's cutscene presentation is fucking stellar, usually. I do have to say my one minor complaint about the cutscenes in this game is the X but, oh, excuse me the cross button in the corner. I don't think it's in all of the cutscenes, but I saw it a lot. Couldn't just leave that out? Anyway, I have to give props to the characters in this game. From allies to enemies, this game is chock full of interesting, fleshed out personalities. I have a great fondness for characters like Kaito, Hoshino, and Genda. And characters like Higashi, Hattori, and Hamura also made a great impression as antagonistic forces in different ways. Everyone feels like a real person with real motivations and real lives that they live out. There are one or two exceptions of people who feel a little contrived, but even in these cases, there's enough going on with them to keep it interesting. I will say that as an American, it was hard to keep track of everybody's name. There is a large cast of characters in this 20 plus hour story, and they've all got names that are outside the realm of what I'm familiar with. You know, if we had names like Karen, John, David, Jennifer, Garrett, and so on, it would be easier to keep track of because I've heard these names a hundred times. I'm definitely not saying these characters should have those kinds of names, and normally I wouldn't even bring this up because it really doesn't detract from my ability to follow what's happening that much. 
but there's a mechanic implemented in some cutscenes where Yagami sets up a statement or accusation that you have to complete through multiple choice. And there were times where I completely bombed these because I just didn't remember who these people were. It's not all that consequential because after selecting the wrong answer you can just try again, but it does make you feel a little dumb to pick all the wrong answers. Hamura from the Matsugane family. Hmm? No. That was before I knew any Yakuza. Exactly. In that case, it was... But there is a big issue I have with some of the scenes in this game that I need to address. Hey, keep a low profile while I'm in the city. It's Joe. Not my thing. Put it this way. The voice acting was one of the major selling points on this game for me, and a significant chunk of the interactions are text-based. I don't think that text has no place in video games. Of course not. But in a game that has such great voice acting, it's a shame when it's not utilized. A great deal of the side cases and activities use this style of cutscene, and there's a good chunk of main plot in the middle that has them too. I feel like a large portion of the game's side activities and part of the main plot could be cut out of the game. It just seems like there's some fat to be trimmed. The opening hours in the third act are really tight and well done, but I honestly had some trouble pushing through some parts in the middle. If we cut out some of these scenes and missions in the midpoint, then maybe we could get some more of these excellent cutscenes instead of the half-baked counterpart. It sounds a little bit harsh, but I only say it because I really love the high moments in the game and I just wish it were consistent. And I think it could stand to be shorter and less padded in parts. As for the music issues I alluded to, the game does have some great music, but I feel like some tracks get overused, like mad. Take this track that's playing right now. For a so-called innocent man with an alibi, your story has an awful lot of holes. Oh yeah? You wouldn't hide something from us, would you? Of Course not. Something like the true killer's identity? I said I'm not hiding shit! Pretty great song on its own, but after a few dozen times it gets pretty old. And half the time it seems to kick into overdrive at a completely inappropriate time in the scene. But this story wraps up really nicely and I'd say it's worth some of the stumbles and the gameplay. Shit. Tom Co. Oh, shit. I'm gonna fight you for some reason. Okay. I can do this. Oh fuck. This game is largely a brawler, a genre in which I have admittedly little experience, but my god, I must have fought hundreds of dudes in this game. And there's a reason I keep using the same phrase repeatedly because the fights in this game all seem to be largely the same, and there are so many of them. A new challenger has appeared. It's dudes. This game's core mechanic is brawling, and I felt that it got old quickly, like maybe a quarter of the way through the game. There's very little variety in the dudes that you fight. Sometimes they have melee weapons and later guns are introduced, which is kind of interesting because they can reduce your max health temporarily if they hit you, but they don't crop up that often and they're relatively easy to deal with because the nice men will be sporting and give you time to get to them. But for the most part, you've got a bunch of randos constantly picking fights with you like you're wearing a jacket with a racial slur printed on the back. Wow, really? They all feel, look, and fight nearly identically. And I feel like the base combat mechanics aren't all that fun or dynamic, and they didn't expand quite enough for me to get farther than tolerating combat. There are two styles Yagami can use to fight, which sounds nice, but even the two of them combined didn't feel like all that much. You got Crane style, which is crowd control, and then there's Tiger, which is more focused, and allows you to be stunned less. After the first few hours, I pretty much stopped using Crane because Tiger seemed objectively more effective unless I was truly fighting a ton of dudes. 
I'd say even with 7 opponents give or take, you can definitely still use Tiger. So for most of the game I was down to one style, and admittedly there may have been some more skills I could unlock to expand my moveset, but for one, I didn't feel the game really emphasized the skill menu enough. I think it tells you about it once in the beginning, but it didn't make too big an impression on me. Looking through all the stuff I could unlock, there wasn't a lot that seemed particularly useful or worth it, especially the stuff that uses up EX energy. Why would I use that precious resource when I can save it and go Super Saiyan in a pinch? I mostly saved my points for the basic upgrades that increased speed, damage, that kind of thing, and I got a few new moves that seemed useful. For me, the combat mostly became mashing square and then triangle to end a combo, occasionally getting interrupted. Once in a while I would do a grab, which was rarely satisfying, or sometimes I would grab an object like a bike and smash people with it. That was fairly enjoyable. Then there's a wall jump attack you can do, but I was rarely able to land it. There was some effort to vary up the combat, but for me it just wasn't enough. It got stale fast. Hence why I constantly sprinted through town like a bat out of hell. Which reminds me, there is actually a fast travel system, but Kamurocho is awkwardly sized. It's just big enough that getting from one objective to the next is kind of a chore, but just small enough that getting to the taxis is hardly ever a better alternative. Instead I run to my destination hoping I don't get ambushed more than once within 5 minutes, and lord help you if there's INCREASED gang activity, every few hours I would get a text from THIS motherfucker saying, Oh freaking dang, there's more gang members in town, can you take care of this all by yourself, please? At this point you're getting ambushed 10 seconds after you finish a fight, and you either have to wait for this counter to go down, or fight two or three of the same guys every stinking time. The first time this happened, I fought this guy, and the implication was that he was done for good. Nope. He always comes back, and it plays out in exactly the same way every time. Same for all the other dudes. This activity probably happened a dozen times for me, and after the first few I would just keep Yagami in his office and go make a sandwich or something. The only difference between dealing with the problem and letting the clock run out is missing out on an ingredient for a potion you can make. And won't. Yeah, maybe that's just me. But aside from the brawling, there are a few other notable modes of play, one notable example being the drone segments. So Yagami's got this drone he uses for reconnaissance, the drone sections are very straightforward, ascend, descend, and turn until you find the thing you're looking for. And there, there's also a side mini game where you can race the drones, it's fine. A lot of the gameplay modes in this game either feel unnecessary and shallow or cumbersome and slow. Another mechanic that recurs a lot is the investigation segment. The player assumes a first person perspective and examines their immediate area for clues. More often than not, these segments left me frustrated, not knowing what to look for or where. Oh yeah, of course this little ticket on the ground was what I needed. Boy, I sure had a good time looking for that. The auto run section was sort of interesting the first time and quickly got old. There are also missions where you tail somebody, which I could honestly describe in the exact same way. That's our guy. Conceptually, it's more interesting following someone, trying not to get caught, but over time, the various people you follow get increasingly paranoid and meandering, which maybe wouldn't be so aggravating if you didn't get a frantic music cue every time the target slips out of your line of sight for a fraction of a second. Ah shit, okay, I'm hurrying. Oh fuck, they've seen me. Shit, I gotta find a place to hide. Ah, crap. I gotta start back here? Then there are smaller things that just serve to halt you in your tracks. Do you remember which key opens this door? If you do, you get a pitiful and useless amount of points. If not, you have your time wasted for 10 to 20 seconds. Oh, and I heard you like lockpicking. What if I told you that there are actually two lockpicking minigames? That do anything for you? I actually don't think I played this minigame more than three times. I genuinely don't know what's going on there. The more prevalent lockpicking minigame isn't so bad. It gets the job done, and sometimes there's a little tension involved depending on the situation. But speaking of underutilized mechanics, may I direct your attention to disguises. From the very start, my curiosity was piqued by this, as you start the game, in a disguise. I thought, hell yeah, I'm gonna have some goofy disguises to cause trouble in. Then about an hour or so later, I find out I couldn't put on my disguises. Unless, that is, it's a super special occasion when the developer has decided I can put a specific disguise on. Why is this menu even here? To torture me? 
I'm guessing the devs didn't want their precious drama to be sullied by player expression. Look, Ryu Ga Go Toku. You don't have to put the disguises in the cutscenes, although I would very much appreciate that. Just let me wear them while I'm playing the game. Let me be an electrician who delivers swift justice, or a hobo who takes no prisoners. Let me be me. Not that I'm bothered by it or anything. This leads me to the side activities. Honestly, this is what I came to the game for. The stuff I'd heard about the previous games led me to believe that I was in for some kooky zany shit with all the side missions. But I have to say, I was underwhelmed. At first, I was seeking these side missions out to play as many as I could, but then this guy is talking to me about finding cats. Just finding them in random places, and taking a picture. Then there's this one with the landlord where she started cooking things and needs you to taste test. And this was fine. There's another one where you meet a guy in a bar and he challenges you to a drinking contest. And it plays out like this. Come on. Then there are the more obnoxious ones, like this one where you get roped into paying an exorbitant amount for some drinks, and you have to use the detective mode to find a way out. I swear I spent about 20 minutes scanning this dumb little bar. After a while I just started ignoring side missions to avoid the headache. Then there are the games and smaller activities. Batting cages, darts, drone racing, VR stuff, etc. In almost every instance these activities felt like something that I would try once, and probably never go back to. They weren't necessarily bad, just okay. Just enough flash to be mildly amusing, but not enough polish to be satisfying. There is a point in the game where things are switched up and my interest in the gameplay spiked. I'm almost afraid to spoil it, but I feel like I've said too much negative stuff at this point and I need to balance it out. About three quarters of the way through the game you get to play as this secondary character, Sayori. She goes undercover in this special club and you get to choose her disguise and actually play as her. It's a real breath of fresh air after fighting all those dudes at- Hey! Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm a sucker for pretty dress up in games. I like character customization a lot, which is part of the reason I was so bothered by not being able to change into my disguises at will. You give me a good selection of clothes, hairstyles, and accessories, I'm a happy boy. Oh, and the more things with customizable colors, the better. In Judgment, I was a happy boy at very select points. There was the stuff with Sayori, and the few points when Yagami decides he can wear a disguise. But I'm sure for some, this won't be a big deal. My point is that from a gameplay perspective, Judgment underwhelmed me in a big way, and the story is what really pulled me through this game. I mean, I logged about 30 hours on this game, but it felt like an eternity at times. And I'm sure there are some gems that I've missed, some amazing and hilarious side missions, but frankly, if they're in there, they shouldn't be buried among the side missions that I did play that were just completely uninteresting. So it's true. I'm afraid so. Okay. What's this about? Do you not see what's happening? All the videos made up to this point? You think you made all of them? You did. What? Clones! You're a clone. I'm a clone. They were all clones. But I'm putting an end to it. I've killed all the others. And now it's your turn. Wait, what are you... Well, I suppose now's a good time to reveal my master- <laughs> Dick! You know, Judgment has its issues, but it's a good game at heart. For all of its tedium and for all the repetition in the gameplay, there are some incredible moments that really make you care about Kamurocho, about the mysteries being investigated, and of course, about the characters. The storytelling alone is worth the price of admission. The mystery of Kamurocho's killings and Yagami's involvement is something I'll remember for a long time. I did find the gameplay a bit underwhelming, but I think others may be more accustomed to brawlers than I am. It's really a matter of preference. 
judgment is a worthwhile experience. I'm glad I saw it through, and I hope you'll give it a look as well. I forgot my line. <laughs>